Okay, I'm going to talk to you now about this uh, little valve that I've made, and I'm very proud of this. It's based on, on a design I saw through Subtech. It's a long story, but for those of you that know, you, you'll, you'll understand what that is. And I, I worked out that I could make it myself, very cheaply and very quickly. And what a difference it makes. Story is, I've got a pump-in, pump-out tank in my boat. Um, and when I pump the water into the base of my ballast tank, the air bubbles out around the ballast tank through this valve. And when I suck the water out of the tank, it sucks the air in through a tube, which is up in the conning tower, in this case, to empty the tank. And, this is the good bit, when I don't have the pump running, it won't let the air out. So that, in fact, the boat just sits there on the surface. So, I reckon it's absolutely fantastic, because you can put a pump in the bottom of your ballast tank, which... Um, can be an impeller pump, so the water can flow through and, and so on. You don't have to have a gear pump down there to stop the water coming in and out or a peristaltic pump. You can just have an ordinary old pump hammering away down the bottom and it works. Okay, so let me just explain to you. First of all, here's, the, here's a close-up of the valve. I, I do have this valve originally placed high in the boat, which was a mistake, but you can see it here anyway, which is a nice picture. So I started this whole thing off by getting, uh, you need a stainless steel, a couple of stainless steel ball bearings. Uh, these are 7mm ball bearings as you can see and it's just an appropriate size, you know, 7 or 8mm o-ring so it can sit at the bottom and, and uh, sit on that and, and, and cause it to work as a valve. Now I used a piece of 10mm perspex to build this but this is basically how it looks. Started off by drilling some nice, in this case, 10 mil, oh no, 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 so obviously not. It would be eight mil holes into this, uh, it was a bit like a cylinder head, and then used a smaller drill, in this case, three mil, to continue the holes down toward the base. Of course, it's perspex, you can see through, so that this makes it really easy, but it doesn't, have, doesn't need to be perspex, obviously. Now, that's the ball bearing. I want to place that... No, sorry. Now, that's the O-ring. I want to place that at the bottom of the larger hole, and then place the ball bearing nicely on top of that, like so. Now, to complete the building, I now take the 3 mil drill and put a hole right through there to the middle of my piece of perspex. I put a hole in the top so that this one can breathe. I put a hole right through the top of that to the middle. It's all going to be explanatory in a minute. A hole into the base of this one. And then, tricky tricky, a hole right up through the base to join those two holes. I then very simply cover the end of this, cover the end of that. Actually, it's just a bit of just a bit of um, five minute epoxy filling them up, and there you've got the valve. Okay, so here's a quick diagram of the valve, uh, so that hopefully you can understand how this works. Here is the ballast tank. Here is the pump in, pump out. Um, impeller pump or something like that. This is the air tube running out of the very apex of the ballast tank that runs down and it's very important this is positioned next to the uh, water ingress point of the ballast tank to this valve. Now clearly I've made the valve much much bigger so you can see this and then from the valve we have the tube that goes right up to break the surface in your conning tower. So, let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. Okay, so when you pump water into the tank, it forces the air through this tube, and it's got two ways to go. The first way is to follow the tube along, but it can't get out because it's going to push this bearing down against the um, O-ring. But what it can do is push this bearing off the o-ring 
and bubble out here. So you have the air from the ballast tank just bubbling out next to the valve. Pretty good idea. Now what happens when you want to uh, suck the, 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 this water out and suck the water in? What happens is fairly obvious. You're, putting a, a, you're causing this sucking motion which in fact is causing this ball bearing to be sucked down onto this o-ring so that the water from the outside can't get through. So that's sealed. But what you're doing is you're pulling this ball bearing off its o-ring and allowing the air to come in through. Very simple process, but does this work well or doesn't it? So consequently, it controls the flow of air into your tank. Now this is the good bit. When the pump isn't working, the water can flow into the, into the tank and it exerts one atmosphere's worth of pressure on this tube. And that is not enough to unseat that ball bearing. So the ball bearing will sit there. How good is that? In other words, your boat, when it's on the surface, is floating on the weight of a ball bearing. It's a nice thought, isn't it? Okay, so now let's go to the construction part. So here you can see the details of this diagram. It's shockingly done, but I, I, all of those measurements and millimetres, it gives you a bit of an idea uh, as to how I built it. I milled this piece of uh, perspex in my drill, uh, centred them up, a uh, couple of centre drills, it's a bit wobbly that one, and then, as you can see, I'm just enjoying putting these drills through, and because it's perspex you can see where you're going. You don't necessarily need that, of course, you just need to know how far the drills can go and where to stop. And now I'm putting the O-rings in, and I found it was good to stick them in with a bit of um, silastic, um, and then put the ball bearings on, like so, and just leave them there for a night. So that, that all hardens up. Then, next day, once you, there's usually a bit of silastic stuck to the ball bearing that you need to clean up. So then the next day, um, take that off and then you slip another piece on a bit like a head gasket and there is your um, and there is your subtech valve now you can see it here mounted high on the boat which is not where it ended up being but I can still test it this way and you can see that when I put it in here in the water and blow bubbles it comes out the bottom and when I suck not that you can see this but you can see the ball bearing the second one moving a little bit the air is coming in through the mast so that's all working pretty nicely. So finally I'm just going to show you um, the relative positions of this valve uh, with, the, uh, with the ballast tank and what you can see here is an open-ended um, canister, in fact it's the cover for the motor room so the bottom is, is open and it's got a tube in the top thankfully so I can use it um, for um, testing this valve but you can see when the valve is up high next to the tank the, the air bubbles out when it's down low next to the tank it doesn't that's the bottom line so I now keep the valve quite low in the hull and it works terrifically okay so I hope that works for you it certainly works for me and 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 it works for the boat great bye